primary care providers know statins very well. We may not always think of chronic kidney disease use a statin. And I don't think there's anything we need to do differently from current practice other than think cardiovascular risk in a patient with CKD, estimate the risk using ideally this new equation, the PREVENT equation that has EGFR in it, and then for the patients that are above the risk threshold, that's usually 10% at 10 years, uh, we shouldn't hesitate to use statins. They're safe in CKD. I believe we should be using them at their highest dose. Blood pressure control is the most controversial part of management uh, in chronic kidney disease. So uh, in our KDGO guideline, we recommend trying to get the systolic blood pressure under 120. Now, many primary care providers will say, I can barely get to 140, and that just doesn't seem possible. And so I will encourage myself and uh, fellow primary care providers that we should try harder. We should at least get patients under 130. And we should just recognize that three or more medications is the rule, that's not the exception. Blood pressure control is so critical for both preventing kidney and cardiovascular disease that it's gonna take, it's gonna be a process and it will take a few medications for people with kidney disease. And one of the biggest reasons why people stop in, in the intensification process is that the creatinine goes up. And I can't tell you how often people will be alarmed by that and stop the blood pressure medication. And that does not help the patient. It doesn't help the kidney. The kidney doesn't care that the creatinine has elevated a little bit. So in the guideline, what we've recommended is that when you intensify blood pressure, you can expect the estimated GFR to drop by as much as 30%, and that's almost always fine. More than 30% should maybe raise out eyebrows and pause for a bit. But an acute drop in GFR is normal for patients who have chronic kidney disease, but their urine albumin is normal. We can use any of the blood pressure agents as long as we get the blood pressure down below 130, ideally to 120. RAS inhibitors is renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system inhibitors. Um, usually we call them the ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs. If the patient has albuminuria, then we really need to use the ACE inhibitors or equivalent because they are uniquely protective to the kidneys for the people with albuminuria. Regardless of GFR, if the urine albumin to creatinine ratio is 30 or above, they should be on an ACE inhibitor. And so in our albuminuric patients, they're both lowering blood pressure and they're protecting the kidneys, but both parts of that are important. The factor that we do need to monitor, the creatinine is overemphasized. The potassium is important. And so primary care providers know to follow the potassium, with, particularly with ACE inhibitors or the equivalent. So how should we monitor potassium? when we're starting patients on ACE inhibitors or ACE and ARBs, as we tend to call them in primary care. What we need to avoid doing is stopping the agents because the potassium goes up a little bit. We need to permit the potassium to go to five, a little higher than five, 5.2, 5.3, um, and not have a reflex to stop the agent and call the medication contraindicated. And so, yes, we should be cautious, but we should err on the side of continuing therapy, reduce the dose, add a diuretic, but try to keep the patients on treatment.